Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today is going to be the final episode of this series where I break down this mix in front of us where I used the Shep's Omni Channel as my main mixing tool. And this episode we are going to walk through the vocals right in front of us in green and also I'm going to uh, just show the settings on the harmonica and the organs because these two elements are kind of the ear candy elements in the mix so I didn't want to uh, make a dedicated video on those only. Let's start with the vocals. First we are going to listen without the plugin and after a few bars I'm just going to switch it on and off and we're going to listen it for a while so you can hear what the plugin does. Why don't you let, let me steal the show? I'm taking over tonight. You ain't got a check, check on it, sugar. sugar. I got all the b -b bread for your butter. And if you're feeling low, I'm gonna make you alright. Come on, how nice it will be when you climb on up. I can get you what, what you want, want, I'll give you everything All you gotta do is ask, ask me, baby No, it ain't no time for me, baby Lean on back and baby, let me be a money tree Oh, no, no, baby, let me be your money tree yeah. Oh, right, you heard that it just day and night. It sounds so clean and fresh and, and crispy and, and just it's like, you know, like a blanket is lifted off the speakers. So we just got rid of these muddy, woofy frequencies. All right, let's open the plugin. First things first, we started with the saturation. As I explained in the previous videos, I love saturations. Generally, I believe this is what, quote unquote, the, the analog sound. Saturation. This is what gives that analog feel to your mix. So yeah, saturation. And then we have a low cut at 150 hertz, because I believe, especially in this performance, it doesn't really need anything below that. And then, as you can see, I changed the order a little bit here. As I mentioned in the, in the first video where I walk through, you know, uh, the plugin, you can drag and drop any section of the plugin and you can rearrange the order. So here what I did, I moved the DSR after the EQ. Because it's very common, you know, when you EQ, especially vocals, and uh, you add some high end, some, some crispiness, some freshness to the, uh, to the vocals, and it also brings up the syllables. So the S's and harsh T's and, and, and that kind of stuff is going to be even more uh, noticeable. So I just put the DSR after the EQ. So first, uh, let's talk about the EQ. I had like a three and a half dB boost with this resonant shelf around 8K. And then around 3K, I have a two dB boost right there with this sharp or sharper uh, Q. And I sucked out around three dB uh, with this tone uh, section of the EQ around 350 hertz. And because we have already the low cut, I didn't do anything with the low end. And then the DSR. So this is the frequency I chose. And if you listen to, let's see what it does. So you can, you can see that this ch 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 and sugar it's really clamping down on those uh, uh, harsh syllables. And then we are going into the compressor and I used the soft compressor. I haven't changed the ratio attack uh, nor the release. I just played with the threshold. These settings just worked really, really great and well. And after that, I, you know, I mentioned in the previous videos and I explained it in details uh, what this uh, insert slot can do. So we opened a other saturation plugin. By the way, this is one of my favorites, this X saturator uh, by uh, Solid Slate Logic, SSL. And I added after the chain 
to give some more girth and more weight. This plugin can really, really enhance vocal, but, but you can put it on your bass guitar, on your mix bus, you can put it on your drum bus, you can put it on your, on your uh, room mics on the drums, basically on everything, and it just makes it sound better. One of the best, as I, as I said, one of my favorites. As I mentioned before, usually I use this slot for spatial effects, like reverbs and delays. But since this saturator already took this place, I opened a other plugin after this. Usually I would open this plugin inside the Shep's Omni channel, but obviously the saturator plugin is there, so I had to put it after. And just uh, use this uh, preset vocal plate and just tweaked a little bit to my settings, uh, especially with, with the EQ. You, you, can, you can really shape uh, the sound of your reverb. So yeah, that is everything uh, on the vocals. It's really simple, really easy. This plugin just works on every f***ing thing. I'm not joking. It's, it's really, really capable, very versatile. All right, now let's move on the harmonica. And start without the plugin first. Let's add the plugin on. It just cleans it up. Uh, the, the volume is, is a bit low. But it just cleans it up and this is what I did. Started with the saturation, uh, in this case I used the even and I rolled uh, the lows of anything below 130 hertz and a bit of the high crispiness around 15k because we don't need that scratchy sound in the mix. And then we moved into the EQ, these are the settings, around 2 dB boost at 8k, a little bit of boost like 4, 3.5, around, around 3k ish area and also I added a little bit of body usually I take out these frequencies around 350 hertz but it, it felt nice to give some body in and also I boosted a little bit around 80 hertz with this uh, uh, what is it resonant shelf and again I use the soft compressor same settings out of the box and just played with the threshold just a word about this soft compressor in the plugin it really works on vocals and any instruments. I mean, instruments that are not, you know, transient heavy, like drums and um, percussion. Anything besides those transient heavy instruments, it just works great. Guitar, piano, harmonica, vocals, organs, um, orchestra, whatever you have it, it's just beautiful. So if you have this plugin, try this soft compression on your instrument bus or individual instrument, and I'm sure you are going to love it. The last plugin uh, for the harmonica is this. I opened the small plate preset and I just played with the settings. So this is a very typical use case. I would use this slot here to put my spatial effects in it, just like this I did. And you just open it, it's there, very easy to use. Let's move on the organs and this is what we have. We start without the plugin and then we are going to switch it in after a few bars. Okay, here we go. So yeah, what, what I did with this, it just made a bit more crispy, more fresh, and less kind of low and boomy and low and heavy. How did I do that? Let's go through, obviously, saturation. And then um, I cut the low end, everything below 180 hertz-ish. 
it might sound and look a little bit too harsh and a little bit too high, which I noticed it was, but I didn't like anything that it, it, this uh, signal had below 180 hertz. It was just too heavy, not nice. It just didn't work with the sound what I wanted to do with the organ. So instead, lowering it, I just added the thump, this kind of low end boost. It's a very wide EQ boost uh, for your low end, this 2 dB, and just worked great. So this combination where you, you have your low cut high and you don't want to lose the low end energy completely, you can add some nice wide uh, Q back with this 2 or 4 dB thumb. Really good feature, really handy. Then we moved into the EQ. Again, you can see the order is swapped. So I put the DSR after the EQ. For the same reason as I did with the vocals, I added like 4 dB um, shelf with the resonance shelf around 8K. And I also boosted around 2 dB, around 3000 Hertz area with this uh, narrowish uh, Q. And I sucked out like 3 dB around 300 hertz area, 350. And I didn't do anything with the low end because it's already taken care of with this section. And then I went to the DSR because as I boosted these highs and mids, I noticed that there is some crispy kind of scratchy noise is creeping into the mix. Because um, when I soloed out, you could hear that there is some, you know, scratchiness which is mostly coming from the saturation and the high eq but when you put it back in the mix you can't hear it it just adds up and it just makes this the tone a bit more you know edgy and more full but it was a bit too much so what i did i found i found the frequency it was around 4k four and a half usually the harshness it's rare in, in that area and just with this narrow cut i just tugged it down so whenever it's getting out of hand this kind of DSR, which I explained, it's more like a dynamic EQ. It's going to take care of that. All right. And after that, we went into the soft compressor again, because the soft setting just works on every single instrument. And as you can see, there is no insert uh, in this empty slot. And the reason for that, because if you watch the previous videos, I added reverb on the acoustic guitar, there is reverb on the um, harmonica, there is reverb on the vocals. So every kind of main element of the mix has this reverb on it. So what I did here, um, also I'm going to show the panning on the organ because we have these tracks here. So what I wanted to do with this organ, I wanted to keep them kind of in the middle. I wanted to give a bit of a space, that's why I panned it to 20% left and right, these two sections, but I wanted to keep the main source, the fatness in the middle and the rest, you know, just kind of pulling out uh, from the middle. So it, it has the, some space, but still part of the mid, um, the mid element of the mix, like the bass guitar, kick drum, snare, etc., etc. So in, in that range. And that's why I didn't uh, add any reverb to that because it would kind of, uh, you know, mess up the, the stereo image. If you put reverb on your, on your mid information, like if you put reverb on your bass guitar on, uh, or kick drum, it just, it just sounds weird to me, especially in, in this uh, song. It just didn't ask for it. That's why there is no spatial effect on the organ. All right, guys, it looks like that's it. We have finished. Yay. And now I'm just going to bypass all the plugins what we have, all the Shep's plugins, and then we're going to play the song and switching in and out. So you can hear the full mix and you can hear what all these plugins can do to your mix. So I'm going to start the plugins off and then after a few bars, I'm going to switch them on.
of rice. I think it sounds really, really good. Um, there is some automation is missing. Um, I explained it also in the previous videos that this mix is, is about the plugin, what it can do. So obviously with some automation, the vocals um, on the guitars and in, in general in the, in the instrument group, group and the bass is still needed. Um, I can hear that. Um, I'm not really bothered um, at the moment to do that. So yeah, this is just the plugin. And if you ask me, it is really, really that good. Especially if you're starting out and you don't know what tools you should use or how to use. This is the one that you can spend like, it's, I know it's like 30 bucks or something. It, it's really, really affordable and it's capable. It can do a lot for you. And if you are a bit seasoned and you also have other plugins, you can use it as kind of the main tool besides your favorites. So this is kind of the, sh uh, the tone shaping stuff and you can add your flavor uh, plugins after this or inside this, as, as you saw uh, before. Thanks very much for every one of you who watched all the videos about this mix and the Shep's Omni channel. If you are one of those who haven't seen the previous videos, I'm going to leave a link in the description so you can watch all the previous videos where I explain everything going through by instrument buses. Like I'm starting with the drums, then go to bass, then guitars, and here we are with the vocals and the ear candy stuff. And also there is a first episode, which is kind of the overview of the plugin. I'm just going to give an insight how I use it, what I think it's capable of, and also I explaining my mix bus. So we have this mix bus here and I have these plugins open. When I started the mix, these were on and I mixed into those plugins. But again, I explained this in the first video. So if you want to know more about the mix bus, just check that video out. Thank you very much again for everyone who watched uh, this series. It was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. I'm definitely coming back with a kind of similar video where I'm going to break down a mix using different plugin. And also um, I have a plan uh, that I'm trying something different. And maybe it's a question for you guys if, if you are interested. So the plan is I'm just going to start a mix, totally raw, rough mix. No plugins, no, no, it's not like a breakdown of a finished mix. I'm just going every, I'm going to start everything from scratch. I'm just going to pull the, the multitracks in Reaper, setting the balance, opening my mix bus chain, try to play with the, uh, the levels, to sit it right, feel it right, then moving on the individual tracks and buses, and you can see me real time how I mix a song. It's like, you know, like being a fly on the wall experience or watching over my shoulder. So you can see every, every move I do, all the plugins I open. I also plan to do another kind of split screen somewhere where you can see all my controllers and faders. So you can see what I do with those because I, I, I use this, uh, the UC1, the plugin controller, and I also use the uh, Behringer or Behringer X-Touch and X-Touch Extender. So I have 16 faders in front of me with the pan knobs, solo knobs, mute, etc. I have the uh, DAW control, the jog wheel, and also I have um, the UC1 plugin controller. So I can, most of the time I use this to, to control my plugins. If you're interested to see a video like that, where I, I completely create a mix from, from scratch, from nothing, just uh, let me know in the comment and um, I will find a way to make it happen. All right. Thanks again for watching and see you very soon in the next video. Take care.